welcome to GDK.io, and um, thank you for interesting in my presentation. Um, sorry, I didn't bring any games with me today. Um, I bring only my slides and some code. <laughs> uh, it's really, um, uh, I'm very happy to be here in Denmark. It's my first time. Um, well, uh, it's, here, uh, it's four o'clock now. I think everybody maybe is tired. We heard a lot of conversation, talks, and code. And um, what about small movie to make um, our last session more engaging and interesting? I maybe I wait some second for the movie. So, so let's go. Here we go. You're really into computers, huh? Yeah. What are you doing? Dialing into the school's computer. They change the password every couple of weeks, but I know where they write it down. Are those your grades? Yep. I don't think that I deserved an F. Do you? You can't do that. Already done. Do you have a middle initial? K, Catherine. These are my grades. How can anybody get a D in home ec? If that's none of your business, can you erase this, no, please? No, it's too late. What are you doing? I'm changing your biology grade. No, I don't want you to do that. You're going to get me in trouble. No, nobody can find out. There, you just got to see. Now you don't have to go to summer school. Change it back. Why? They can't possibly change I said change it back. Okay, okay. I guess I better get going. Thanks for the ride. Yeah, okay. Bye. Bye. He like here. So, do you know this movie? <laughs> yes, called War Games, and it's, um, it's from 1983. Um, if you know this movie, it will be um, also known that almost ended with a catastrophe. Because just because a smart schoolboy hacking a few passwords and um, without knowing that he hacked the United States military supercomputer. Um, and it started um, with a thrilling sequence of events and almost ended in nuclear war. war. The film is, is really quite interesting and was nominated for three Oscars. Um, this bring me, uh, that brings me to our talk today, Passwords. Um, because we will talk about today not only about passwords, they sound simple um, at first, but in fact, it's this complex subject. Um, dialing not only with password, but secrets, and management of secret and microservice uh, with many credentials, as well as modules with much access data. So here's the question. How can we intelligently manage our data? We have a lot of applications and lots of apps, and uh, a lot of configurations with password and ABI keys and so on. And what about? Um, protecting uh, protecting our this our pass on, uh, our passwords. Um, by the way, my name is Walid, and I come from Egypt, and I have been working for almost 17 years now in Germany. I'm currently working software engineering in uh, by one one the telecommunication company uh, in Germany. Uh, I code some stuff to make our customer happy and also my boss. <laughs> and um, please, if you have any question, 
just shout me or sign up. We have only 50 minutes, and anyway, it's our last talk today, so we have a lot of time. And I will be here also for tomorrow if you have any question. So let's go. Um, by the way, um, the, all the material and source code is on GitHub, so on link. You can download it, so you mustn't write anything. Uh, so what is the secret? Um, this question actually in our digital world is only is secret is only password um, or something more is behind it. A secret can be anything for authorization or authentication on your computer, so or other computer-based digital devices. Mm, such as passwords. LTB, ABI keys, RTL certificates is also all is secret. Secret can be also sensitive data that can be that could be confidential. For example, credit card uh, credit card numbers or social security numbers or also secure emails. Um, if you have secure emails, the connection between secure emails can also be secret. So far, so good. But why we do we need to change our method to save these secrets? So we work all with password and credential ABI keys. We save our properties and we, and we save them our jobs and we save them in different files. And when we try to change the database password, we call the operation, please, we have a new change. Please change our password and so on. Why we, cha why we must change? our way. Um, this is not a very smart approach, is it? And additionally, we work now with lots of applications. We have a lot of modules, and we have micro, uh, micro service, and they come every day with a lot of more and more apps. Every app needs a password. Every app needs connection, application server properties. Every app needs a data database password, every app need, every I uh, keys, and so on. And the complex apps are turning also into microservice. Uh, so we will have more and more. So before, uh, the typical way of for saving password and secret is still very old-fashioned today. We call the operation, you must change our password. So it is very old, and I think the operation teams and the development teams mustn't know our credentials. So this is very uh, from security way. There is also security reasons that need to be considered. The Brian Krebs is a, the well-known American journalist who fight several against cyber uh, criminals. Right in his blog, if you connect to the internet, someone will try to hack you. I think uh, you don't necessarily have to be in the internet to get hacked. Um, it can be happen other with other applications that with you uh, that you are sensibly data gets abused. Um, is anybody here, please, right, raise your hand, encrypting his password in property file database? I think a lot of I'm. We also, uh, by one one or telecom or another company, we have all the same default way to encrypt our password uh, of data of database, and somehow it is saved in application server or a microservice. Um, but you know, anything that is encrypted can also easily be decrypted again. Um, so that's the way we need to a new, modern, and secure way to manage our secrets. And also we need a simple way to manage all secrets, such as password, ABI keys, and credit card numbers, and so on. Um, and I, do, I did a lot of search to find the solution for our company to make a central solution to manage all or our password. 
this password as a service um, or secret as a service, um, this solution must fill or our increased safety requirement. And I found Vault. Finally, found some tool um, service named HashiCorp Vault. Has anybody heard about before HashiCorp Vault? Okay, cool. Um, with Vault, you can secure, I think, so. you can secure and you can uh, store your token, your password in this backend. This HashiCorp Vault uh, with also, you can also with HashiCorp Vault secret, you give you a modern computing service to manage all this data. HashiCorp Vault also offer a constant interface, they give you an HTTP IRS uh, service um, to manage all these secrets and tight access control and record a detailed audit log and give you monitoring protocol for all access your uh, this, uh, this secret data. And it saves, protect, and manage all this password, and your R keys, your ABIs, um, and also Vault records this in audit log. So let's, uh, we'll show you the use cases for your company or your, uh, your service, which use cases you can use for HashiCorp Vault. HashiCorp Vault is one of the system that can you save the, this secret and it's another service. It's not only HashiCorp Vault, but I give you only example. How can you change your way to save this secret? Um, you must and shouldn't use HashiCorp Vault, but it's a very interesting um, system. I will show you why. And here's the use case of this HashiCorp Vault. HashiCorp Vault, um, the first use case is that Vault has a secret management. Secret management that saves the password, um, and then you can read this data by key value. is one of the optionals that HashiCorp Vault can you offer you, and Vault encrypts this password before you save before saving this this secret. So you don't need to encrypt or you decrypt this password. And another use case in HashiCorp Vault are dynamic secrets. There is ingenious saving mechanism that they create the password on demand. So that when the user asks the HashiCorp Vault, give me a password for Postgres uh, database, he will generate for, you, generate for you a dynamic password and they will give you only, the user will give you the, the password, and this password is only for once. So when you try again to log to the database with this password, you will refuse. It's only one time. It's this very interesting uh, use case. The client uses it only for one time. The last use case you can find in HashiCorp Vault is leasing, revo revocation, and renewal of password. So what does it mean? This is a password in Vault. They have a, li a life cycle. That means the Vault renews automatically and can also recover them. Um, since Vault uh, uh, 010, this is the last version of Vault, HashiCorp Vault, it can give you a secret ver ver uh, versioning. The another feature of HashiCorp Vault that supports the secret versioning, so you can accept, accept, accept the key you, you choose which version you need for your, your password. So when you change your first password, you have another new version. So you have a detail, detail, detail uh, of your old password. So you, when I need the password from ne next version or so on, so I can get the, new, the newest version. Um, this feature is uh, available in the last version of Vault. And on also, I give you Web UI interface, um, so you can admin all your secrets <coughs> via web interface. So you can add, read, delete your password, and you can log in via LGEB or token 
or other credentials. This, however, this is only possible by static key value passwords. So you here you save only the key value passwords um, if you need. We use it somehow for the development um, environment in our, in our company. So we save here all our applications um, server passwords or database passwords, and we have central place to manage all these passwords. Um, for production, it has another system for the production, so you can, we can use the, in the production Postgres as backend. I will show you it later. How can we use it with Postgres database um, for, um, for the dynamic password? This chart, high level, so high level description, so architecture guide, how works HashiCorp Vault. So in the core, um, the client sent, for example, some password request to get access to an application. So that can be requested via HTTP API, then Vault generated a dynamic password and send it back to the user. In addition, it logs uh, an audit for the entry. Vault is written in Google Go. Is this, you know why? I, as a non C, you not so sure. The guys, they choose Google Golang uh, because Vault lives through its intelligence threading. And Go offer contra uh, contrast to Java um, contemporary threading management. So you can easily download it. Um, Vault this is uh, some binary file. You download it from vaultproject.io, and you start it. So you need you don't need any config. You need only I will show you how you need only the config file, and you need here for your testing on, on the uh, uh, development environment uh, minus dev. So all the data will be in memory. So after you shut down Vault, all the data will be gone. So you don't use it only, you don't use this in the production. And you can also need uh, some, some tokens and some address uh, token file. And uh, this is the def development lesson address when the start, uh, when after that HashiCorp Vault will start it. Um, here, some databases um, are Vault supported as backend system. You can use database or NoSQL or files as backend system. Um, database and NoSQL, you can, you can use it as dynamic passwords. The HashiCorp Vault support only these four kind of database. So Oracle, MySQL, PostgreSQL, on SAP HANA. Um, one kind of this database you can use as backend system for dynamic passwords. Or, like I said before, or NoSQL database, you can also use it as backend system. So you can store all your credentials and secrets in, the, in, the, in, the, in those database. Uh, and you can use it as HashiCorp as backend system. Um, another system also work with cloud backend, like Amazon Web Service. You can use it as backend system for HashiCorp Vault, or you can save it a physically key value file. Um, like you can, you choose. Uh, I, when I tested before, I started with key value, and uh, we try our requirement. We needed more and more, so we choose for this dynamic password, and we choose Postgres as backend system by one one. Um, those are the most important backend that Vault supported. So for this backend, there is another HashiCorp Vault offer you an adapter. So you connect it to this adapter, um, and you configure it. Uh, the, uh, the Vault configure for you the connection to this backend system. So you don't need any 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 code or somehow this two line of code to connect it to the the backend. I will show you later how can you connect it to Postgres, for example. We'll see later that. So let's, let me show you and demo. How can we start?
Um, here is my vault configuration. This is everybody can read. This is my back end, it's in memory, and it's my listener, it's a TCB, and my address localhost for the board uh, 282000, and TLS disabled, that means I don't need to any keys or any token certificate. This is only for the development environment, you don't use it for the production. So in the production, you need uh, certificates and uh, production f um, and um, token files. And disable mlock true. This is interesting for the development environment. So mlock will be disabled. So I can here. This is my start. Uh, my start. I I downloaded before Vault. This is only binary file. Where, uh, I said, and I started with server Vault server minus dev in, in development, and this give, I give you, I give him my config file, this is the path of my config, vault config, and here is initial token ID I use, uh, so I can use this token ID when I starting vault. And this is my dev lesson address, uh, so when this address, I will, after that the vault will be present. So let us start vault now. This is already started. So we can here fit him with some secrets. You can um, key value, you can you choose key value to write uh, secrets to the vault. So you can key value and put um, secret. Um, we choose the username, GDK, and the password IO. This is my first secret, and I put it already. Now I write the first secret to the back end. And next, I can another another secret, secret two. You see here, he write it with the first version of the secret. The first version of the secret GDK is IO. Only we'll test and have two passwords so I can read it with vault key value and get um, secret. So I he give me first secret GDK IO and I can also uh, read it in JSON format. He can give me JSON format to the password. Um, so you don't need um, to JSON conversion or something. Here, let, uh, let, let me show you the wall back end. Here is the web UI of Vault. It's, um, now it's run locally. I need my token. The token is uh, generated as a started uh, vault on the development environment, and I can get this vault ID, and I look in with this my vault token ID. In. So I now I have my secrets here. This is my first secret GDKIO, and the second secret is well uh, here. And you can uh, in JSON format, and you can also edit. Um, and now let us GDK IO, IO versions to. And we can save it. So when I try here to read. Um, This is the version two. 
He gave me the newest version of the GDK, um, the, uh, the password for the first user, IO version. So if I need the first version, the first password from the first version, I tell him, give me which means, uh, I choose the version one, and he will let me the IO, the old password from the application. Um, so you have a historic uh, form, uh, lock when, when the password changed. It's very interesting for development and production you do that you have only central place uh, when you manage all your passwords. Um, here you can, another, um, the Vault Web UI give you another, uh, offer you somehow tools and settings for your authorizations and notifications and policy and access and so on. Um, so you can also war, um, configure it on, um, via web, web BI. Um, so we can here delete the password with vault. <coughs> delete. So we will delete it and when I will try to read it, So give me no kind, no password. Um, this is vault backend as key value. Um, this first hour. So. So you might wonder how um, we have now passwords somewhere, uh, statically passwords or dynamically. I will show you how to, uh, you connect it dynamically. But how can we connect this password with our backend system? Uh, so I have a service X, and he needs the password for database. Um, how can he connect it to the Vault backend? Um, um, you need we need somehow an easy way. Um, that read and write and delete this password from Vault backend to this uh, to this to our service. I think everybody heard about Sp Spring before. Santa, right? Spring. Um, Spring um, give us a lot of modules like Spring Vault. Somebody heard about Spring Vault before? Okay, A Spring Vault is. Um, somehow is an abstraction of Vault backend, so it can give you uh, an easy way to connect to this Vault backend. Um, this easy way is, is um, just you can depend, it, um, you, you inject your dependency and you, you will try, you, I will show you how can you connect it to Spring, and after that you have already the backend of the Vault, and you don't need to write Vault client on somehow like that. Um, so this is architect guide, uh, architect pictures for Spring Vault and HashiCorp Vault with a Postgres backend system. So it supports the access to management to um, the give you the client ask Spring Vault to a, a request and the Spring Vault call ha um, HashCorp, the back end, HashCorp generate a dynamic password and give you the Spring again, and you, the user can use it for one time. So we also, Spring Vault um, offer somehow the concept of Spring Data repositories. So you have the create, read, update, delete functionality with the Spring Vault. Um, this is only the dependency what you need to connect uh, Spring Vault to your application. So you need only the Spring Vault core um, and um, the release, uh, the last release uh, to your application. This is the last version of Spring Vault is 201. 
Um, and a Spring Vault uh, supports only somehow four or five clients, HTTP clients, so you can connect uh, this uh, with your application. For example, um, uh, Spring use REST template of a Spring Web, and another another HTTP clients uh, such as HTTP components or Netty or Java uh, or L connections um, or OK HTTP 3 from Square. This is only the HTTP clients um, you can use it with the Spring Vault. Let me show you a demo how can how it works. Here I have um, an static, an static and dynamic uh, example for the connection uh, Spring Vault to um, to HashiCorp Vault. The static example I use it as key value, uh, so I can I have here this is a very ex uh, simple example Spring Boot uh, application, so. It's, uh, it's this only is this with Java Convic. I have here the Spring Vault uh, offers this abstract vault configuration, so you don't need uh, any configuration exists that uh, your token ID, you overwrite it, your client authorization, and your SSL configuration if you need. And after that, you have a connected to the static vault configuration. Um, this is my token ID, what I generated before. So when I have a static, um, the Spring Vault offer me this Vault template. This Vault with Vault template, I can connect to the Vault backend system. So I can I uh, gener generate a secret. This secret is only use a name and password, and this. CB and sortfish as password, so I can write uh, vault template, write secret my IP and secret, and he will write it for me as key value to the backend. And it can also um, vault template. I have read functionality, will give you and secret my app with the secret my app can give you the. Here the username and secret, and you can also with vault template you can delete um, very easy your secret to the backend system. This is static way how you save your password um, in the vault backend system with the Spring Vault. So you need your Vault configurations is only the token ID, and if you need, if you necessary you can I connect it with this L configuration, and this is the key um, with this vault template you can read and write uh, your passwords. So um, this is my dynamic configuration. This dynamic configuration I have uh, the customer repository. These are uh, extended from uh, create read repository. This with the Spring Data, um, so I can I can save and delete and read um, this customer. This customer has only first name, last name, a small object. Um, the dynamic configuration is, is very easy. I, uh, you need this is the entity manager what you have already in your application, the load configuration manager, the GBA transaction manager, Hibernate. Uh, the only Change here is the username on data, uh, username and password for the data sources. So here's a connection how you connect your Postgres. Uh, you connect Postgres with Vault backend. So you don't need to inject your username and password. So here's this, you see 
The string password, uh, string username and string password is only initial, and you don't have any configuration from outside to inject this uh, property. So use, I will get the, my username and password from HashiCorp Vault. Um, here, this is um, the template for the adapter for the Postgres. The adapter for Postgres is his Walter, um, offer you Vault response support, um, read Postgres secrets. You needed uh, this Postgres cre uh, credential read only, and you will get the username and password from the Postgres. This is, uh, and I inject my dynamic configuration, so I can set my username and password from the, from the Vault uh, backend. The Vault backend is this before I must inject it one time. Um, I don't know if you can see, you can copy that. So you can see here, um, this is only the configuration I need. Here's a configuration I need to enable Postgres. So Vault, Secrets, Enable Postgres, and after that you will have uh, Postgres enabled to your Vault backend. And I write uh, this database config and I choose the Postgres database plugin. This is what Vault uh, offer me, and I can write after that roller for the uh, for the username and password. I connect my database. Let me show you. Here we can see with the secrets uh, backend. You can see which uh, which backend are configured already in the Vault backend. So we have key value and systems is already default and uh, no Postgres as backend. So when I try to install example, so I um, I now I connected to Postgres plugin. I have already Postgres on my local machine and I can see my secret now. Um, I have already Postgres as database, as backend system for the Vault backend. Um, so, with the dynamic config, so I can connect my database with the username and password, so nobody, um, no operation, no, no software developer, no need to know which username and password for each application. So you can, with this module, you can uh, manage your environment, the development environment, the test environment, the production environment with uh, multiple uh, configuration. And you have central place to you manage all this data. Um, so. Finally, our last station of our this speech of HashiCorp Vault, Spring Vault, um, let's sum up what we learned uh, the last 40 minutes here. Um, I think we all agree 
that sensible data, uh, secret data such as passwords, uh, BI keys, uh, credentials, credit card uh, numbers, or so on, um, have to be handled with extra care and should be absolutely secure. Um, nowadays, people are more online than local, and the old way to encrypt password, and you have a jar file to decrypt this password again, or algorithm to, to decrypt this password again, is this out of date. And um, um, data like, the, like these secrets should be hashed or managed with modern technologies. And we work now with a lot of apps and a lot of environments, uh, so we need somehow to have a central place or to manage all this data. Application or applic um, operation mustn't know the secrets. So the operation uh, person or sit uh, somewhere, he mustn't know the password of the production database. Um, it's not good to know uh, uh, to make that. And also mechanisms of vault. I found a mechanism of vault to fulfill these requirements. In another system, like Google Ding, uh, Somehow, you can choose, uh, you mustn't choose Vault, but you can choose system like that. Um, somehow, you, must, you, can, you can choose similar process like HashiCorp Vault, but I found HashiCorp Vault full, fill out our requirement by one and one, so we choose now Vault for our production. Um, the Spring Vault offer useful abstractions of Vault, um, it simplifi simplifies the integration of HashiCorp Vault with your application. If you have, if your application already work with the Spring Framework or Spring I/O, Spring Boot, so it is very easy to inject Spring Vault uh, on top. Um, but you are you are not necessary to choose Spring Vault if your application is out in a Spring Framework. Because Vault is offer you also rest it should be HTTP from from the home, so you don't you shouldn't use Spring Vault. But if your application already work with the Spring, it's very it's very easy to work with the Spring Vault. Well, now after all we hear and see, uh, please answer yourself these questions. Are your, secure, are your passwords really secure? Any questions? So, so, and thank you very much. And I am today, tomorrow is here all of the day. So if you have any question about spring, spring ball, um, I will give you that. Thank you. <laughs>